Before you step into a third party encounter, you better understand the potential danger you face. Thanks for joining us on today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Emeryville, California in the United States. Liberty Safes is America's number one safe manufacturer with advanced features, a lifetime warranty, and actual fire-tested fire ratings. They're who I trust not only to secure my firearms, but also my valuables. Check them out in the link in the description. There's a lot of people in this one, so let's identify our actors. This lady right here is our victim. She's approaching these teens because she thinks at least one of them knows somebody who stole her cell phone. So that's the news story. If you go read the news story, please do. Link in the description. There's all kinds of information there. That she feels like that the guy in the red hat either is one of the ones who stole her phone or knows who did. So then he pushes her because she's, a, you know, a little bit, yeah, you do, you know that guy, and he's angry about it. So he pushes her there, and that doesn't kind of tip her off that I need to get the heck out of here. She will kind of go. And again, this is Black Friday. It's a little bit later. It's busy. He's clearly upset that she would insinuate that he, you know, was part of that. It's going to push her again. So now we're going to have to stop it one more time because a bunch of people are going to come over. Now you see this guy in the jean jacket right here is an off-duty California Highway Patrol officer. I don't know if the officer is armed or not, but uh, he has not been identified beyond his first name in any of the news stories that I've read. So you're going to see him get her away. Okay, fine. Let's not escalate this situation. And he is going to try to get her away from those guys. Now, something important is about to go down here as they're kind of walking off and getting things away. You're going to see the officer get his cell phone out here and start taking a few pictures of these teens. So he's going to get some pictures of these kids and when the, the lady there, the girl recognizes it, then the guy who was the original there, he gets real upset. You see him take the hat off here, and now he's pissed. So he's going to come back over towards the officer, and now the fight is on. He takes a swing at him here because he's offended, and now a bunch of his buddies are going to come in as well. They run off screen. Look up the top now. They're going to run back around towards him as well. You're going to see he's got at least seven people who are after him. Now you can see as well that there is some security. There are even going to be some on-duty officers who are going to show up here who are working at another business nearby, but they are going to absolutely pummel this off-duty. And you're going to see him here get in, in entangled with one of them, and then that's going to bring six or seven with still, again, security around to see what's going on and they are gonna get this guy down and stomp him unconscious. Now he does lose consciousness at some point as they come in and go out. You see the officer come in to kind of get that one guy off of him and security finally gets them off of this guy, but they are able to kind of get away as they're trying to get this guy and figure out what conscious, you know, if he's hurt bad or whatever. He is lying unconscious on the floor right now. You can see all these kids are just scattering now. All these are all teenagers that have just been gathering here at the mall, and, and this broke out that fast. Now you're going to see our off-duty officer is going to finally come to here in just a second. And I wish I could say that it's completely over at this point. They roll him to kind of get him to a better spot, and he's going to finally kind of groggily get up and regain his bearing and his consciousness. <clears throat> and when he does, they want some more of him, and so he's back out. He gets punched in from behind again, and you're going to see him go off camera a little bit. We're not done yet, friends. He's going to finally come back on camera here a little bit from the left. And again, there's going to be even more bad juju going on here. As you can see, all these guys causing that particular challenge. You're going to see him come back as this guy wants to fight him some more. You can see him bowing up like he's ready to fight. He's got his, his elbows up like he wants to go. And our off-duty officer is not really having it. When this other guy in a white shirt comes, he actually pepper sprays him right there. Drives that guy off. That gets the rest of them to go away. Uh, last I heard, police arrested two of these kids, and the other four are still at large, and they're still looking for him. Boy, that is crazy dangerous stuff. I got a question for you out of today's video. Leave me a comment. Let me know. What's your ethic of stepping into third-party encounters? Are you like, nope, not my circus, not my monkeys? Or are you like, nope, I'm a self-defender for a reason, and I'll step in and help the defenseless? I think it's an interesting question. I'm interested in your answers. Let's think about lessons now. So yeah, there is an awful lot for us to think about here. And you can see them. I've, I've started a little bit farther in when they're already yipping at her. And you can see they're aggressive. They're frustrated. The guy in the, the white sweatshirt and the red hat has already pushed her a couple times. So this has escalated already into a physical conflict at this point. Best thing to do at this point, call the cops. Get the heck out of there. There's no sense in, in having a conflict with an aggravated person like this. 
This is just the better thing to do here is escape and evade this problem. Get on the, uh, the phone with 911, borrow somebody else's cell phone, go in a store, whatever. Call the cops, let the cops come and figure it out. Now you're not in this kind of conflict. Now, if you are this officer who decides to step in, number one, recognize the potential cost of stepping in against a bunch of folks. Whenever you step into a third party encounter, you have risk. Now, everybody gets to set their own moral compass on this. Some people say, nope, I'm not going to get involved. Whatever. It's not my circus, not my monkeys. Other people say, no, I'm a self-defender for a reason. I need to protect the, the good people and I'm going to do that. Whichever one you decide to go with, I think is acceptable, but you better know what your answer is ahead of time. Best thing here, get her away and get, again, get, let, get the on-duty guys there and let them handle it. And I think the officer did a pretty good job of that here. Hey, let me get you away from this problem. Let me get you away from these guys. I get it that it's a problem, but I want you to be safe. So de-escalating, great idea. Being a good witness, also a great idea, but recognize when you stay in the proximity and you don't get out of the danger zone, you can have challenges. And that's exactly what we see here. He gets his phone out, starts taking pictures, and that one girl sees that and gets angry about it. She's like, oh, he's taking pictures of you. And now the real fight is on. Now I gotta say, we do know that the officer is carrying pepper spray. And we know that this is all pre-indicators here of a big fight is coming. So right now you need to have that OC spray in hand. You know, uh, we call it the jerk sauce for a reason. When someone's being a jerk and there is an incipient or, or a coming uh, physical conflict, that is the time for OC spray. OC spray is not good when somebody's swinging punches at you, but when they're threatening to swing punches at you and getting that jerk sauce out and hosing this guy down and saying, nope, I'm not going to fight with you, man. And then having some more for any of his partners who want to fight at the very least diminishes them and gives you a much better you know, possibility before this escalates into this big deadly force problem. Now's the time to have that OC spray out and going rather than trying to figure out what you're doing. Cause by this time that he's getting hands on you, it's too late. If you want wanted to get out your OC spray too late, you're in the midst of a fight. Now you got six or seven guys chasing you like this guy does and all this bad stuff's going on. Great time to get that firearm out and start protecting yourself. Is this a risk of death or great bodily harm? Absolutely. And when you have a little distance at a time, because by this time you've got six or seven people around you, they've got a hold of your hands, your arms, those kinds of things. And there is no way you're going to get a firearm out. Even if you are carrying, like I said, I don't know if the officer was carrying off duty. Some don't, especially in California. I know several cops who don't carry off duty in California, which is insane to me, but whatever. And, and if they, even if he was though, at this point with this many guys on him, there's no way if you try to get a gun out right now, one of those guys is going to take it away from you and probably use it against you. So know those timing problems and make sure that you have them. Now then, is this a deadly threat? Unequivocally, yes. You got six or seven guys here, but notice your backstops and those kinds of things. And, and really, honestly, again, six or seven guys, I, I don't know anybody who's got that kind of Bruce Lee level of empty handed skills that's going to handle this kind of fight. Notice there's like four people trying to break this up and it's not going to happen. So I know folks get in this kind of mindset where they're like, oh, I can handle all these guys and I've got great boxing skills or whatever. But when you start facing five or six angry people, there's really nothing you're going to do. And I say that as somebody who literally studies all the time. Now, notice that he is out in this instance. So was this great bodily harm? Yeah, they knocked him out for sure. And, and of course, we got to ask the question, wait, what are the police going to do about this? So there were on-duty cops around, but even with that, on-duty cops around who did show up and end up breaking up the fight, it still didn't save him from injury. So I would recommend and, and recognize that you are responsible for your own self-protection. Even on Black Friday, even with armed security and armed police around, even with a heavy police presence, they weren't able to get this one completely taken care of without, you know, without him getting hurt because he's going to get punched again here. So you are the primary agent in your own self-protection and you must have the attitude, skills, and plan to do so. Final thing again, as this guy comes in, you notice here, he finally is going to get his OC spray out in his, in his hand and, and eventually get this guy with the OC, but it's too late. Notice this guy here, he's got his hands up. He wants to go right now. Again, now's the time. You're going to diminish him. He wants to kind of flex on you. Now's the time to get him with the hot sauce and get him to stay away from you and at least diminish him and his ability to see because waiting until he gets on you just doesn't work. Tons of lessons that we need to learn out of this one about de-escalation, escape, and avoidance, about stepping into third-party encounters, about the danger that a group, especially just an angry group who is, feels offended, can be to you, and about when the right time to use what tool is as we think about covering our ASP.